bite, no bite. Look at your little lip. <laughs> I'm going to try and tune into him mm -hmm. to find out because I feel like he wants to talk about there's something else at the root of this mm -hmm. boundaries dance that we're having. So, yeah, I feel that too. I feel like he's upset about something. Okay, good. So if anything comes to you, please speak mm -hmm. up. Mm -hmm. Like he's not being heard on some level. Yeah. So, should we just start tapping? I feel like it's related also to when he was gelded. Like, because I feel him asking me to do some work on him. All right. In that moment, it feels like he lost his power, his masculine power, and it's been a fight to get that back. He's showing me, it's like he wants it handed back to him. He's showing her that he wants it handed back to him. That part of himself that was taken, he wants it given back. That part of himself that was taken, he wants it given back. So possibly an energetic restoring of his testicles. Yeah. Uh, I just see him wanting to use my hand and like put them back on. Yep. Like that's put them back onto my body. And we have been through this with every horse that's been gelded with completely different bodywork practitioners receiving the same vision wow. and the same request for help. She's feeling a lot of sadness, like she wants to cry. Like he's grieving that loss. He's grieving that loss. He's requesting that that be honored. And he's requesting that that be honored. And interesting that Macaw is right with him. So that's interesting right there because when we started, Kalia moved him. So this is already a gathering of his power yeah. and, and asking her to move for him. Yeah. Started on the left side of his body, wanting to clear that, and now he's working through the right side. It started on the left side of his body and he was wanting to clear that. And now Juliet says he's working on the right side. Okay. And she says it also feels related to him being able to heal his leg, that he needs to heal this first. I feel like Cooper wants this filter now, like uh, too much direct energy. It almost like he wants me to work through Macaw, actually. Not your body, you want me to use your body instead? Is that okay? That's nice of that he's offering that. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely just gonna... There's some scar tissue and some things that became asymmetrical and healed asymmetrically in that part of his body that he's just kind of showing me, particularly on the right side, like it got the scar tissue kind of got pulled over to the right and it got tighter on that side almost like he's had some discomfort always you know anytime his body is fully taking form like it would always be uncomfortable for him and he's ready to have that not be there anymore
so his pelvis just like shifted up a little bit and now he's a little bit more stable and balanced and almost like one or two vertebrae at the very back of the pelvis just kind of shifted and went back into alignment now there's just a little healing with some nerves there was some nerve damage that happened makes total sense mm -hmm. disrupted blood flow that healed but things weren't quite perfusing fully because of the scar tissue that formed And now I'm just feeling like he's drawing lots of energy into that area and wanting to kind of pulsate it back out to clear anything that's lingering energetically like um, whether it's the grief or the smallness or that, that courage piece, you know? It's almost like he's been searching for that, the courage to come back into that power, knowing that it will be there. That, that's what I just heard like knowing that it's going to be there when he steps back into it it's not gone nobody took it from him it's always been there he just has to remember that and realize it will be there and when he steps back into it it will be there waiting for him to you know pick it back up almost there so just that wisdom that people can take things from you physically but that's just a very base level of removal and all the other levels of that aspect of you are still there and you just need to reclaim them. So I'm just kind of feeling things kind of moving back and forth, right to left as he's looking and reestablishing that balance between his masculine and feminine energetics. Um, and structurally and physically. And I find it cool that he's with Kalia again because there was that time they also brought me that message that for my own learning about masculine right. feminine balance. That's right. And she's like the embodiment of the divine feminine. In that moment, he was showing me that. And what's so cool is that he is wanting to move back in that and really flow that energy for himself and heal whatever was keeping him from doing it. Yeah, he feels good. He feels almost done now. Now I'm just feeling just a little something with his bladder. And now see how he just did that little stretch with his left leg. I don't know if you saw that. There's just feels like a little bit of a stretch in the bladder and the ureter. And then like his ureter as it moves down through his male parts. He's just wanting to get some stretch and some healing through there. Yeah, it feels way more symmetrical now. It's back into balance. Thank you, McCall, for helping. And now I'm almost feeling like the bottom part of his colon even is readjusting now. That's crazy. It impacted so much in his physical body. It's kind of incredible. Yeah, I, I think I, I've, from what the horses have shown me, vets and lay people, of course, have no idea how much this castration surgery is affecting and damaging so much in their body. So yeah, he's like expanding. I can feel him like expanding his energy out through the pelvis in a way that he couldn't because the scar tissue was disinhibiting it. I can just feel him like drawing energy in from the top, expanding it down, but then also expanding laterally through his pelvis. And now I'm, no, he doesn't want me to do anything else. But maybe he just wants to integrate it himself. And he's just kind of showing me his heart and how much heart and love he has. Yeah. And this father relationship that he has with Poza, how important that and how healing that's been for him. Mm. And that he was able to move into that super open and heart space 
which was really beautiful and he appreciated it, but it also made it even more clear to him how, how damaged that, that masculine feminine balance had been in his body. Right. Because it's like he was only able to run that feminine energy. Yeah. He showed me himself standing up on a cliff, just powerful and free. And he showed me that one day when I first came in. He's like, that's me. That's who I am. That's how I see myself. Oh, look at that again. He was grieving that he lost that. And he's ready to have it back. for letting me know when I was not listening. <laughs> wow, that was beautiful. Oh, look at his face. Yeah. He's just like moving into deep acceptance. It's really intense. It's beautiful. It's amazing to feel that. Like how quickly he could move through all of that and then just come to this like space of deep acceptance and integration of it all and like yes he's going again like like feeling into different parts of his body and seeing how they feel now mm -hmm. <laughs> you know like checking his legs out how the muscles feel the embodied his full being yeah I feel like that had felt like a, a tinge, like an underpinning of frustration uh, and sadness in him. Mm -hmm. The past couple times I've come and I don't feel it anymore. And here's Kalia again. I felt like she just said thank you to us. here. <laughs> <coughs> oh, I feel like his whole energy field has changed. Like he just expanded a couple rings. I think Kalia is really fascinated by the way that you work. Mm. and she worked with you before when you were working on my shoulder mm -hmm. I think that's a big part of why she keeps coming around because mm -hmm. I think she's just loving I think she just really loves this work yeah she's very powerful and that I believe that's how she works yeah um, and she is super intrigued to kind of have another 
<laughs> what was that? <laughs> Super intrigued. I was going to say the wrong thing to work with me. Is that what you wanted me to say? Okay. Were you about to give all the power to her? Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I was going to say to have a tool to work through. Yeah. And she was like, no. And there's her exhale. She was like, no. We Don't give work. your power away. We can work together. Yeah. Yeah. Which is interesting because the other day when Pose bit me, it was something similar that was happening. She was like, hey, nope, nope. You're deferring to somebody else. Yes. Yeah. We humans must be really handicapped with boundaries. Totally. <laughs> because it's like every horse gives us the same lesson yeah. over and over again. Yeah. It's like life 101 we missed that class <laughs> totally missed it yep or we were just taught a different way like an unhealthy way that's so funny that she smacked the face on their tail that's hilarious i'm gonna remember that you she will. certainly got my attention. Yeah. They're very effective at that. She's like, stop it. Yep. Yeah. No, none of that. Just stop it. Just right there. Yeah. Okay. So I'm having this really interesting, I think I can just show you my left hand. I'm having um, just this interesting pain that suddenly showed up right about here, which like on a human is about L2 in the spine. And then the muscles on the right side of the spine just kind of got really tight. And then I'm feeling down through this left side of my pelvis, through the psoas muscle and some of the musculature there, just suddenly everything got really tight. Um, and this slight pain, I know that it will ease, but it's just interesting that that suddenly came. And it feels related to whatever is cobra has been feeling this whole time in his body constantly right uh yeah fascinating to me and it, what's interesting about this whole thing full circle is the first time that i came here i was so drawn to cobra and remember feeling so much kind of i could just feel that there was some sadness and trauma that needed to be processed there and i was very preoccupied by his leg and all this stuff and at the time I was kind of sitting and holding some concern about him and and Odie like walked up right into my line of vision between me and Cobra and she was like, no, no, just, he's fine. And now is not the time, I've got him, he's good. Like don't hold that kind of energy right now because that's not what he needs. So it's interesting that now all this, all these months later to come back and kind of have a little bit more information now about what really is going on there and what he was ready to release today you know it's kind of cool that's amazing that Odie said that to you because yeah, she did when cobra was arriving in the very beginning we were wondering what to do logistically and how it would work with montaro and him and yeah. Odie came forward to both gulas and me on separate occasions and said i've got him huh. Leave him to me. I'm taking care of him. Yeah. So totally. The and now two years later. Yeah. Same message. Same thing. Um, mm -hmm. She's got him, she's and got to him. a completely different person who was never there at the beginning. So mm -hmm. it's like people say, "Oh, are you just make that stuff up?" It's just that. But when it's yeah. multiple occasions and to yeah. multiple different people, yeah. after a while, you know, there's a certain part of your brain that has to start to expand and say, "Well." Mm -hmm. Maybe some of this is possible. Mm -hmm. Maybe, just maybe. Yeah, totally. <laughs> <laughs> maybe all of it's possible. Maybe all of it. Zora. Zora's like, you should let me in there to finish up that hay that's left. Okay, okay fine. <laughs> no, 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 monkey. Oh, my kind. I already had a little fat. Come on down there, darling. Zozy. Zozy. Come. 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 
<coughs> See? Right there. There you go. You think I should let you in? Yeah? I'm okay with that. We got Zosie there. And now I'll let you in. Come on, handsome. Yeah. And even his ass to come in here. Like he asked to come in here quite a bit, but it's he's kinda of like doo -doo. Yeah. and like I'm just a little guy. Can I come in? And yeah. today he was like, Hey, let me in. Yeah. It's my turn. Awesome. And, I love it. and now we have Odie yeah, and Cobra. Yeah. You're my sweet girl, aren't you? You just always like to nibble on my fingers, don't you? And Juliet is working now to move. When you do, this is another thing the horses have taught us, is when you do this spiritual energetic work, you really need to then work it through the physical body. It's like we are incarnated beings. So when we work uh, spiritually and energetically, we need to move that energy frequency through the body and out. Juliet, were you feeling uh, any of Cobra's reality in your body as a result of working with him? Well, yeah, I mean, definitely that the emotion was really intense this time when you know compared to other times i've worked with them um there was a lot of empathic clearing it felt like like mm -hmm. he, it was almost like cobra wanted the depth of that emotion to be known right right and felt by someone else um and then this yeah this interesting physical i'm just kind of working out the kinks now on my back and my right my right pelvis and hip right, that i wasn't really feeling that before so I think part of that to me, because he wanted me to feel it empathically, my sense is that he wants me to know what he was physically feeling in his body. And, and I'm going to sit with that a little bit and see if there's anything else. Like I do feel like he's walking also a little funny right now. So maybe there's some residual physical clearing that needs to happen more kind of on the skeletal and musculoskeletal level. And then maybe that's why I'm that's sitting still in my body. So I'll sit with that mm. and see if there's more that wants to move today. But I have just his whole energetics have changed today compared to when I first got here, mm -hmm. and then last Friday the yeah. way his energy was, and then that all oh, the thing that happened with the other girl. Remember you told me the story? Yeah. He was kind of manifesting a little bit of that. So it could have been even before that. He's been having that like Yeah, he's been he's been working on um, boundaries and asserting himself yeah. as, you know, say, Well, I've done a great job of coming into your space and being soft and gentle. Mm -hmm. And now I want to know that when I tell you to get out of my space and to leave me alone, I want you to listen. I want to mm -hmm. know that you'll listen. Mm -hmm. And that's part of it too. yeah that's part of real relationship totally and also his teaching for the other uh, woman that works here was that that's a healthy boundary and it's a positive thing mm -hmm. it doesn't mean a loss of trust or a loss of love in mm -hmm. fact it means an increase yeah because if you can if i can say hey i need some space and you go yeah sure no problem that's a healthier yeah. more trusting more loving relationship yeah it means i can give a no and i can also accept a no with yeah. no charge, no judgment. Exactly. No passive aggressive, you know, yeah. anything. Mankiness. So what you're feeling in your physical body now, mm -hmm. do you feel that same thing when you work on humans? No, not usually. Okay. No, that's what's so interesting to me because in all the years that I've done this work, I've worked really hard to not um, 
uh, absorb in my own physical body. Right. Like I don't usually know what's going on with someone by feeling it in my body. I'll know it intuitively. I'll, you know, I'll just have a knowing or I might visually get cues that will show yeah. me. Um, so one of my biggest learnings working with the horses has been to really need to open that sense a bit more because they do work so powerfully what in what I would describe as clairsentience, right? That empathic physical experience of something emotional or physical and that's their way of communicating what's going on for them um yeah so that's something i'm learning and getting better at is receiving information that way and being able to interpret it in the way that they want it to be interpreted see i but do you think that that would be okay to do with humans to let their symptoms run through your body i don't feel comfortable doing that it's why i've never worked that way with humans i i prefer to keep that yeah that level of distance right yeah i i think that and the people i've seen who do work that way Mm -hmm. Uh, my sense of their bodies is their bodies are so tired Mm. and this one woman she was a very powerful uh, worker but her she was carrying 200 extra pounds on her Mm. body and that's why Mm -hmm. and I I talked to her about it after the session I said listen I I don't think this is a good thing Mm -hmm. and she's like well that's the way that I feel it that's the way I get information and Mm. I'm like could you open to the possibility there's other ways of (laughs) receiving information in other ways so your poor physical body isn't so beleaguered and isn't and this is again is that as healers and body workers and like healing facilitators there's always this dance between the spirit and the energy in the body Mm -hmm. and so many of us burn out and actually get diseases because we think that because we're doing this powerful work and this amazing energy and it's it's really mind blowing and it's it's all good and it's all healing. So we think automatically our physical body will be taken care of. Mm-hmm. And that's not how it works. It's not true. Yeah. Because we live in a physical universe mm-hmm. and the physical world has its own rules. Mm-hmm. And so for me, I believe that part of the reason I'm here is to integrate the mind, body and spirit together. Yeah. And the body is the densest part of the soul. Yep. So it's not separate. It's not something that hangs out here by itself. Mm -hmm. And the spirit and the mind are doing all kinds of crazy, amazing things. And the body's just this tool or this vehicle. I don't believe in that whole thing of transcending the physical body or, oh, my body's just the car I drive around in. I, Mm -hmm. that is for me, such a, such a wrong way of viewing it or maybe not wrong, but maybe it's one level of understanding. Limiting. Limiting. Thank Mm -hmm. you. Yeah just a very base level of understanding yeah um and when you can move into the body is the densest part of the soul Mm -hmm. and then honor it that way and and integrate it that way because that's what the horses do they don't separate they don't separate at all yeah yeah and that's yeah, and and I think that's why they shift so fast. They're like mm-hmm. children. Yeah. They don't have the blocks and they're not separating the spiritual work from their body. Mm-hmm. So we, you can see the shift in their bodies very quickly. Like mm-hmm. Sione here, oh mm-hmm. my gosh. When we first met her, she was she was so broken down and her belly was so huge and dropped. She's total sway back spine. We did not know that she would, would be able to recover. Wow. She was in such bad shape. Amazing. And I yeah, just she's gathered, she's pulled up, she's mm-hmm. she looks like water when she runs. And she's, you know, she's number two in the herd. So awesome. her emotional, spiritual empowerment has tracked right along with her beautiful body. Mm-hmm. Which, in many ways, I believe that we we manifest the structure of our physical body, you know, or at least we interface with it in a way that we, we can modify it when, you know, with the work that we do on the mental, emotional, energetic level, Mm. we can modify and change the way our physical structure is, is in in physical reality, right? Like Cobra, I think, well, his physical body will shift now because he's working through all those layers of, the emotional holding that happened with the trauma that he experienced yeah. physically, that now he can clear that. Yeah. Right? And 
soon after he arrived, because again, talking about the, the interface with the emotional, with the spiritual, mm -hmm. and with the physical body, soon after he arrived, because this is a horse that his entire life has suffered seasonal starvation, mm -hmm. which is what happens to wild horses. Mm -hmm. So all of these horses, when they arrive, they just park themselves at the feeders, literally. Do. And I expected, you know, for normal horse, when they're, when they're given 24 acts, seven access to food, they'll do that for three months. Mm -hmm. um, some, some of them as short as three weeks, but these wildies did that for like a year and a wow. half. And Cobra at one point got so fat that Gulas and I separately I had entire conversations with him saying, you are headed for laminitis and diabetes and insulin resistance yeah. and is Absolutely. and sent him pictures of what he would look like and how he would be limited in his body and how much pain he'd be in and and just calling his attention to it and saying is that it's your body if you mm -hmm. want to do that to yourself that's mm -hmm. fine mm -hmm. um i'm not going to make every other horse suffer i mean i guess i can't say what i would do when given the if that happened right but mm -hmm. just to say to him this is what you're creating do you want that um and it was interesting because over the next two weeks he just dropped weight wow like peeling off layers and he got himself right out of the danger zone in two weeks flat wow. and but he still will tend to from time to time just to really chub up mm -hmm. and every time he does i kind of say to him hey are you paying attention mm -hmm. <laughs> look what's happening in your body but i think the work you did today is directly tied into yeah, that right totally. yeah because anytime we're looking at excess body weight we're looking at armoring we're looking mm -hmm. at protection yeah. there's there's no question protection, totally. in humans and animals so when we get to those pieces that you know i've seen people they don't change anything they eat and the weight just and drops everything off just changes with because their metabolism. Yeah. the body now feels safe mm -hmm. yeah you don't have to put that that energetic protection around you mm-hmm mm -hmm. Wow, I didn't know that about him. That's so cool. Yeah, she Sione's such a different horse in every aspect.